It's wicked beer for the working man. Here's an interesting question that made me think a little bit. He said, hey, Steve, when you got fired from WCW because of your tricep injury, we all know the story that you got a call from Paul Heyman a few days later to go cut promos for ECW. But I want to know what your plans were before you got that call and where you saw your career going. Okay, and that's from Mark over there in Belfast, Ireland. So we'll get here to Belfast. Huh. That's a good question, and where my career was going to probably go, I thought in my mind at the time, although I never made a phone call, was either going to be New Japan or All Japan Pro Wrestling, just because I enjoyed the style over there. I was a pretty good mechanic over there, and, you know, i just been told I wasn't marketable by Eric Bischoff and fired. And I'd already been to see Vince twice, and I knew that his plans for me were nothing more than a mechanic. He did not see Superstar written on me, and so I did not want to go to WWF. I did not want to pick up the phone. I did not want to ask Vince McMahon for a job. I was lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time. Paul Heyman was the first guy to call me, and I accepted the job there on the spot. And putting in a body of work there over the next few months under the guidance and watchful eye and ear of Paul Heyman got the call from Vince McMahon, and I got pitched the ringmaster and went with it, knew it was a shitty gimmick, and turned that into stone cold. But to answer your question, I figured my career would be in Japan, you know, trying to follow in the footsteps of... You know, guys like Terry Bam Bam Gordy, Dr. Death Steve Williams, uh, Bruiser Brody, Stan the Lariat Hansen, And those are four guys that were huge stars over there in Japan. So where I would have been able to measure up to their standards without the Stone Cold gimmick, I have no idea. And I would, I would like, likely say doubtful that I would have achieved what those guys had achieved without being Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's my respect to those guys and the, the, the career and the past that they blazed over there in Japan. Yo, J.D., what's happening? What's going on, Steve? How you doing tonight? Hey, man, where are you calling from? I'm calling from North Carolina, about an hour above Raleigh. North Carolina. Man, I tell you what, man, I ain't run Raleigh in a long time. That used to be a good-ass town for us. I enjoyed that neck of the woods. I heard you got a Paul Heyman question for me. I do got a question about Heyman, but I want to ask. I just want to say something first. Go ahead. I'm a lifelong wrestling fan, but I want to say thank you because you were the reason I truly got into wrestling as big as I have in my life. When you hit, I have not stopped since. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and everything you did was perfect. I loved it. Thank you. Man, I appreciate it. I had a good time doing that job, and I, I, I tell you what, if I could uh, you know, bring more people to the sport and watch it, and, uh, you know, make people dig wrestling or affect their lives, it was a good thing for me. I appreciate it. What's your question? Well, my question, like I said, with Paul Heyman, I wanted to ask you, what was it like working with him in WCW with the Dangerous Alliance? And also when you jumped uh, to ECW while you were injured and everything that happened with WCW, what was it like working with him, Create well, I guess, as a manager and then as a boss? Well, let's go back to those WCW uh, days. Let's go back to those WCW days. I remember when I first uh, met Paul, I can't remember specifically the town, although I'm sure he can because he's got such a good memory. But, man, for some reason, me and that guy hit it off right off the bat, and uh, we're on the same page, and, you know, we and Paul was super, super smart. And, you know, obviously he was a lifelong wrestling fan as well and got into business, and he was kind of way ahead of his years. So, man, we hit it off, we traveled together, we laughed our asses off, and, you know, we're traveling with Rick Rude, and uh, Paul Lee's you know, just you know, laughing and chuckling back there. It, it wasn't until, you know, he went over to Philadelphia and started ECW and doing his own thing. I tore up my arm in Japan, Bischoff fired me over the phone, I needed a job, and the second day I was out of a job, that's when my phone rang, and it was Paul Heyman. I answered the phone, he goes, Steve, it's Paul Lee. I said, hey, Paul Lee, how are you? He goes, oh, man, I'm doing good. Hey, I just want to know, uh, you want a job? And I said, well, shit, Paul. I said, my arm's busted. I can't work. And he goes, ain't got to work. Cut promos. And he told me what the deal was. Come down once a week. He paid me a little bit of money and cut promos. So I went down there, and we started doing our thing. And I remember that first night I was there in ECW Arena. Mick Foley was working with Terry Funk, and damn, uh, someone had a flaming chair. 
uh, and hit someone with it, and the damn flame flew off the chair, caught the guy in the front row on fire. And I'm thinking, this is my first night in the ECW arena, and we're about to be out of a job because everybody's burned up, and there's going to be a bunch of lawsuits. Anyway, later on that night, about 4.30 in the morning, it was my time to cut a promo, and Paul Lee kind of gave me a little bit of a direction and just said, talk. And that's when I cut that seven-and-a-half-minute promo in front of Sandman, Raven, Mick Foley, all those guys, and, and Tommy Dreamer. And it was just money. And Paul E. helped me harness all that and focus it. So I'm looking forward to getting this new DVD. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to get it. And Paul E. has just been an instrumental part of my career uh, from the WCW days, giving me a little bit of advice here and there, although more is just, just friends. And I was still green and learning the mechanics of the business. So, And he just uh, seems to be able to channel people. Uh, you, you watch some of the promos he's doing right now on Monday Night Raw. Absolutely riveting. The guy is just peerless and is one of the best ever on the mic. And that's the bottom line. Who's more full of it, Eric Bischoff or Paul Heyman, when it comes to retelling stories from the 1990s? Man. <laughs> Boy, that's a good question. Uh, because I've spent more time with Paul E., and half the stuff, you know, I don't remember, so yeah. I can't remember if it's true or not. But yeah. I, I'll just say that they're, they're both great storytellers, and I enjoy being around both of them. Uh, and I, I really like both of them. I'm friends with both of them. But, yeah, can, can, can they, they can absolutely spin a yarn. But but both guys, and they've had interesting careers. They've had interesting, interesting lives, you know, with uh, Bischoff. And I remember, you know, growing up and finally getting the AWA uh, down there in Texas. And remember Eric Bischoff is young, you know, good-looking broadcaster, uh, commentary guy, and doing interviews with the wrestlers. And then all of a sudden, you know, he comes down to WCW, and hell, he ends up being my boss. And then all of a sudden, we didn't see eye to eye. And, man, I tell you what, he got a hold of uh, WCW, how he was able to get himself into that position with his background, with his resume. You know, he's he could sell ice to an Eskimo. And so, man, then the, the Monday Night Wars ensued. And, you know, they stomped our ass for a long time. But then, you know, they kind of self-destructed or imploded. And I don't know all the dynamics of why everything went downhill over there. But and you look at Paul Lee, you know, the guy that's, you know, started off as a photographer because he just wanted to be inside the business and got his way into a booking room where Dusty noticed, you know, wondered why in the hell he was there. And was able to just to parlay that into a career and go down to uh, Continental, all the places that he went, Mid-South, uh, and NWA, and WCW, end up in WWE. Uh, he's just had an incredible career, and, and he's just so charismatic and such uh, a talker, and he's so smart. You really can't tell if he's filling you full of bull or if he's telling you the truth. I got a pretty good read on him, but he's a, he's a dynamic personality that I really, really enjoy and has done so much for my career, and, and consider him a very good friend.